What's going on you guys, TBR here back yet again with another video and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Street Fighter Duel video. In today's video we are going to be sitting back and talking about the topic that I know most of you had requested and that is kind of a new player guide, team building guide, and kind of how to approach the game, just some basic overall information that you as a new week one player are going to want to know. But before we go ahead and get into all of that more, make sure if you guys haven't already done so, you smash that like button and subscribe, and let's just go ahead and hop into it. Now, first and foremost, a couple disclaimers right off the top here. So the first thing is going to be that, of course, this is an idle game, so really you are going to hit walls at a certain point in this game and that is really where the big subject of contention for a lot of people comes from because they feel like that's a automatic paywall at that point i call it just a touch grass wall if you're somebody that does not want to spend money into a video game like this i totally understand that and while this game will try to incentivize you to do so just like any other idle game out there just ignore it and move on with your day. Now, to be completely transparent, of course you can tell I have spent a decent little chunk of change on this game, but I am also a content creator who is trying to get through some of this content as quickly as possible, so that way I can bring you guys content like this video today. So, you know, do as I say, not as I do type situation when it comes to that. Now, something else I want to go ahead and cover here right off the top is re-rolling because this is, of course, going to be a new player guide. But first, I just also want to go ahead and let you guys know I am going to be going over kind of more in-depth tips. I'm going to assume you've played an idle game in the past. I'm going to also assume that you have played an <laughs> played a mobile game in general, to be honest, because most of these games retool, re reskin the same thing over and over again. But I digress. So with that said, I'm not going to waste your time and sit there and just insult your intelligence with information that is pretty basic stuff for the most part. But when it comes to re-rolling, now that I got kind of those disclaimers out of the way, there is some incentive from some people out there for people to re-roll. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, I don't really see the point of it, mainly because at the beginning, you're really not going to have the option of being able to get some of the better characters in the game anyway. And by some of the better characters, I mean like Bison, Yuri, you know, etc right that's pretty much what you're looking at i mean these characters you're not really going to be able to pick up anyway right at the top trying to re-roll and if you want to be in re-roll hell forever that's your prerogative who am i to tell you how to spend your time but at the same time i feel like that there are way better things that you could be doing plus on top of that none of these characters are going to be anything that is going to super carry you to the point where you're going to get you know to chapter 10 or something you know just trying to re-roll for them forever so that's the first thing you know you're probably going to end up with cami or poison right off the top with that first multi at that point i think personally poison is a little bit better but if you wanted to go for cami go for cami try to at least get one of those two but 90 percent of the time you're going to and then beyond that if you really want to re-roll i wouldn't go too crazy maybe try to get maybe a character like elena maybe a dulcim you know there's certain characters in there that would be super beneficial but chances are being that this is the week one of this game and there's so much new content for you to play through for the first time, you're going to get a lot of multis. So chances are any of these more common characters outside of, you know, like I've said, some of these other characters, you'll go, you'll get them. You'll get them eventually, right? So that is going to be the first thing I just wanted to cover there. So let's go ahead and talk about the basics. So the first thing that you're going to want to know about Street Fighter Duel is because it is an idle game, there are two things that this game completely runs off of it's going to be the lifeblood of this game and that is going to of course be your characters as well as your character's strength right so by characters i don't just mean your team um that is a important delineation to make i mean your characters because your overall power is going to be very very important for not just building up your combat power for your overall account, but also to help you to unlock certain abilities for the fighters you might be using as well. So if we take a look here, we'll use Elena as an example. And if we click on Chun-Li down here, you'll see these three characters. You're going to notice that the stronger these characters are, the better 
that my Elena could be. So you guys will see that there. She will get some buffs from having these characters built up. So that is very nice, right? And these bonds are going to be for every single character. So really, really nice that these are in here because this incentivizes building up characters that you otherwise might not, or at least trying to rank them up because that is very important ranking up your characters, and by what I mean when I say ranking up, if you go to the Awaken tab, you can go ahead, you'll see here, we'll go ahead and use Cody as a good example. We can go ahead and go to the Awaken tab, and this does change the amounts and what you need based on the grade of the fighter. So as you guys can see here, this one is going to be my Poison, who is an S+, plus, and that is pretty expensive to take her up to the next tier, right? So these do change based on the rarity tier of the fighter, and as you guys can see, this is going to be a common Cody, so we can go ahead and give you a visual example. If I were to go ahead and feed the other Codys to him, then he will go ahead and he will rank up to the next rank, which is B+, and then so on and so forth with any of your fighters. And again, really what changes is the amounts of what you need and what you need specifically for different rarities of fighters, right? Because certain characters like Bison here, they are very, very pricey. You need an A-plus Bison at this point to go to the next rank. So again, some of these characters easier to build than others, but building characters, ranking them up, very, very important. So with that said, let's go ahead and talk about team formation and kind of how that also feeds into the topic at hand. So if we go ahead and go to the challenge, I'll show you guys my team. So if we go ahead and take a look here, so this is the team I am currently using. Uh, I just started using this Mad Ryu, and yeah, it's been pretty fun. I'm going to end up building him up, I get the feeling today. But with that said, when it comes to how to build a team, right, the first thing that you're going to want to know is you're going to want to take a look at this. Right here, this basically tells you how much synergy there is with the whatever character combination you have. So you really want to aim for this guy right here. This is a very important buff because that 25% attack bonus for your team is really, really good. But as you guys can see here, I have a... <laughs> I have a build that isn't necessarily ideal, uh, but at the same time, it works for what I am trying to accomplish because it at least gets me to that next step below the max, which is going to be a 20% HP bonus and a 20% attack bonus. So I'm sacrificing 5% basically to use M Bison. So <laughs> there's that. Now, of course, this right here is also so important because of stats, right? And you're going to notice that there are certain things that are going to be different for certain classes of fighters like your master fighters here they can be used to activate faction bonuses for any faction aside from the infernal faction so that's really really good masters have a really unique ability there that's really useful now infernal fighters don't contribute to faction bonuses but they have extra buffs over here so that's going to be what my bison's doing and then if you're wondering about legendary fighters then you're going to notice that they have no factional advantages or disadvantages right so with that said, that kind of gives you an idea of what you're looking at there as far as what you're aiming for for a team build. Really, ideally, that 4-2 setup is going to be the best thing that you could go for for just that passive buff, and that's going to help you out immensely early on in the game. So you really want to take a look at, when you go in here, what faction it is that you want to try and focus on. Now, of course, there's multiple different factions in the game, and we are going to do some summons at some point in this video today as well. But if we go over here to the list of fighters, so you guys are going to be able to go up here, and you can actually see that this particular summon, I can actually pinpoint what faction I want to summon for. So if I go here, then I can go ahead and pinpoint a faction that is going to be most beneficial for my account based on what I am trying to build. So as you guys can see there, all I can pull is from that particular faction, from the faction recruit, and these little guys here that you'll need, these little blue tokens, these guys you'll get every once in a while for different events and so on. They are, of course, going to be in paid packages as well. But what I really want to go ahead and try and show you guys here is of course going to be kind of what you're looking at with the wish list. You'll eventually unlock this when you do this is going to be really useful because you can also pinpoint kind of which characters you want the game to prioritize in your polls and this will help you overall to maybe hopefully get the characters you need in order to keep ranking them up and continue building up your account 
building your account is very, very important because when you start off and you start playing the story mode, really your first wall is going to be chapter 428 if you're playing free to play. Now, off the bat, if you want to buy packages to start off, or if you're somebody that maybe just wants to spend a couple bucks and wonders if that will really help them, my biggest recommendation for a minnow or some sort of dolphin or whatever the case may be would obviously be the Chun-Li buy because this right here, this package is very cheap. It's a couple bucks, you get Chun-Li, and she will help carry you through a lot of the early game content. Very, very useful. But if you are a whale, on the other hand, you know, world's your oyster, but honestly, M. Bison is kind of the way to go because this character hacks the game. But that's kind of what I would do if I were just wanting to spend a couple bucks or big bucks on this game, and you guys know which route I went with. So, with that said, jokes aside, when it comes to building a team, really what you want to focus on, of course, is the faction, the build, kind of getting up 4-2 split if you can, unless you've got one of these characters that's just so good, you can just kind of bypass it and sacrifice that 5%, and you'll be in good shape either way there. So once you have done that, there are a couple of things that you want to know about character building. So there's going to be several different types of currencies, really three different types of currencies that you're going to need for promotion of your fighters. And by promotion, what I mean is that basically just going to be leveling up your fighters. So basically, as you guys can see, there are going to be these two different things that I will need down here. You're going to, of course, need money. And then you're, of course, going to need these XP cans. Now, with that said, there are also going to be other things that you are going to need in order to continue building your fighters and I actually do not think that I have a fighter that needs to be there yet so let's go ahead and take a look here break stones at certain intervals of leveling up you will also need these break stones do tend to be a little bit on the scarce side at points for you once you get kind of into the deeper hours of the game at the beginning just like any game they're incentivizing you to play and they want you to continue to be able to progress so for the first several hours you will see plenty of this and it's fairly cheap at low levels, but it gets progressively more expensive in order to keep building up your fighters with that. That particular currency, it is a little bit tougher to come by. However, if you are having problems building up your fighters, therefore having trouble building up your power, and therefore having trouble getting through more content, my recommendation to you guys would be to go to the Supreme Fist. This is going to be somewhere where you can actually pick up a decent chunk of what you need in order to build your fighters up. So this is really nice. You're also going to be able to get gems for clearing these floors every 10 floors. So overall, this is where I would go for some of that currency. Another really nice place to go, of course, is going to be your bounties. Make sure you keep up with those. And then when we go into the global operations, this is also a really good place for you to be able to pick up not just those stones, but also some other currencies as well, including gems so i would definitely if you were stuck in story go through some of these things try to get some of those currencies and try to continue progressively building up your fighters that way so with that said those currencies are of course going to be the lifeblood of building your fighters but other things that you need to know about your fighters and i'm going to use a better example here i'm going to use my bison but you guys are going to also have gear available in the game now, of course, the gear slots you can see right here, and there's two different types of gears that you're gonna have to worry about for the first few days. The big ones are going to be, of course, your normal gear. Now, gear is going to be something that you can level up. It's fairly cheap. You can quick select these little guys right here whenever you see these guys drop. These guys right here are going to be what you use to build this stuff primarily, outside of just burning some old equips that you don't need anymore once you've out-leveled them. But with that said, this is going to be kind of the next thing that you're going to want to look at now something you're going to want to be aware of though with gear and i'm going to go in here and show you guys kind of what i'm talking about so if we take a look here we click on the gear that's over in these shops and i'm going to go through some of these shops with you when it comes to these gears and kind of just talk about them briefly but if you take a look here you're going to have several different purple gears now when it comes to gears pretty much you're going to want to make sure that you click on this little spyglass right here and it will tell you who this gear is best for, who this is going to be best for 
on your roster in general in the game who you want to use this on. So you want to make sure that you are getting something that's beneficial to the characters that you're going to want to be using, right? So you don't just want to go in here and waste your currencies on this gear all willy-nilly. If you do that, you're going to end up running out of currency and then you're going to have some issues. Now it is also really important to note that only blue gear and up can be leveled up. Now I would say that you would probably just want to save your resources unless you absolutely need the stats for some of your higher rarity gear like your purples especially your golds, maybe even your blues, but that's up to you. But I would just wait for your purple gear because you will be able to pick gear up fairly easily at a certain point, but that will maybe take several days if you're playing free to play, but at the same time I would try to save your resources even more so if you're free to play. So that is something you're going to want to know. Now of course you're going to have different shops here that you can get different things in, and there are going to be different grades of equipment. So these things like for instance this guy right here, you of course want to make sure that you are being smart about how you spend if you're planning on getting these because these actually cost gems and they aren't necessarily cheap, right? However, I'm probably going to be going in here and buying some stuff for my team because there's a lot of value in here for me right now and there's that. So with that said, the general store will have some in there. Take a look at those, but again, guys, the guild shop, and then I believe even, not this guy here, but I believe the city shop might have a few. No, it doesn't. So really just these guys are the ones you wanna focus on. So make sure that you focus on that, keep an eye on it, but at the same time, don't go crazy and just buy all this stuff because you just need it and or think you need it, but you actually don't because it's not going to help any of the characters that you want to put it on. So that is going to be the next thing when it comes to gears. Just make sure that the gear that you are buying, you are equipping to the right characters or at least getting gear that can be equipped to the right characters for your account. Otherwise, you are going to be in bad shape. Now, Next thing I want to talk about is going to be these guys right here. Now, these are going to be your martial fighting souls. Now, these guys are really, really important. They are very good, and they are something that you want to try and pick up whenever you can. Now, the place that you're going to be able to pick these guys up, and you guys can see here that this has multiple effects depending on when it's how much it's leveled up to. Right now, it's just got the base. However, you can level it up. It does require a currency that is a little bit tougher to come by. So to build this up, you aren't necessarily using the same currencies as these because again these fighting souls are different however the fighting souls where you pick those up if we go into explore these are actually going to be part of your global operations for clearing these out the first global operation which is master trial fairly easy simple straightforward not something that you should have to worry too too much about so you can go in here clear this guy out, get that first one, which you just saw on my M Bison, and then you can go ahead and get yourself a nice little boost to your character. And overall, these things are very important. They are the other part of your equipments that you need to be aware of. And like I said, you wanna make sure that you are paying attention to all of these different things. So that is what you've got as far as the different types of equipables early on in the game. Now. Let's talk a little bit more about the character building as far as the team bonuses go, as far as just team builds go, and go over some of that. So when it comes to the team build, 90% of the time, especially if you're somebody that's not spending on the game, you want to make sure that you pay attention to having a tank here up front. Having a tank up front is really, really important because they're going to soak damage to allow your other characters to be able to do what they need to do. Typically speaking, your tag in fighter like Elena here for me and for a lot of people will be Elena just because she is such an amazing character, one of the best healers in the game and one of the easiest, definitely the easiest best tank to build or healer to build in the game right now with this week one build for the game. But with that said, very, very good character, but you don't want her out there, right? She doesn't need to be out there. She shouldn't be out there. And if she is out there, that means something went wrong in the fight. So a tank, a good tank at that is very important. Now, the reason I really like the team that I chose is because it has so many different options in this game right now between just DPS, tanking, healing. There's so much that you can do with this faction. I mean, if we take a look here, so much that you can do right so that's why i kind of went from that because elena and poison are so good by themselves that i wanted to kind of build around that so a character like zangief for example if you are going that direction very very strong 
This is a great tank. This is a character that is a wonderful addition to your team, especially early on if you're a free to play and you need that frontline tank to soak that damage. You also would like to kind of see certain aspects to these characters as well under the hood and things that you may not pay much attention to are things like knockdowns and knockbacks in this game. Because if you're able to group up the enemy team into a corner, keep them knocked down, especially if your tank is able to facilitate those things, then that is going to help you to output more damage to more characters on the enemy team with your abilities. And it's also going to help you to stay in the fight a little bit longer and to avoid some of those hits at times. So this is something that you wanna look at as well. But a good tank is very important. Like I said, Zangief is going to be an amazing one. Makoto is another one, but I don't think I pulled Makoto, unfortunately. Um, but there are so many good ones. E Honda is another great option for this faction. So great options for tanks are very important, and especially early on when you are going to be a little bit under leveled, as well as if you are a free to play and you don't have the ability to just buy some characters that you want or whatever the case may be that is of course going to make your life a lot easier having the ability to soak some of that damage for your dps characters and to keep your support and your healer or whatever the case may be out of the fight you do not necessarily want them out there in most cases especially your healer so there's that so with that said that is going to be the next thing I wanted to really dive into because it's going to kind of lead into the next topic, which is going to be this right here. So your combo setting. Now, this might be something that you may not pay attention to in the beginning, but trust me, very, very important. So you have your combos here that you want to pay attention to. So this is something that you want to try and prioritize whichever character you want to be the main DPS cannon like whatever monster attack that you want to throw out there first when it comes to your super combo starting you want that character to be prioritized here so you want to pay attention to how these characters skills interact with each other as well you don't just want to pay attention to who's at the front because you also want to pay attention to how these characters stagger their different abilities and how their abilities are going to work in tandem with each other so that is something that's very important to keep in mind I'm still kind of tinkering around with Mad Ryu and Elena here on this team to try and figure out some pretty good little combinations but that's something that I'm just doing kind of in the background the past few hours playing this game so that is that but just make sure that you are paying attention to your character's skills if you don't know how to find those or where to find those you just go in here to your skills you take a look at your skills and you can see exactly what you have unlocked and you can also see what level you need to be at to unlock more so this brings us back around to leveling up your fighters because that also is going to unlock more skills or more skill bonuses for your fighter but it's also going to unlock things like your bio by upgrading your characters so you can get more currency and so these characters being built up building up characters in general building your roster summoning fighters is some of the most important things that you can be doing in this game early on and that's why i do recommend that you summon right now now, some people may tell you that you shouldn't summon, you should wait for a certain fighter, and that is up to you. If there is a certain fighter, like for me personally, Akuma is the character that I am really, really waiting for. I'm saving for him for a reason, because he is my favorite character. I harp on this in any game I talk about like this, always pull for your favorites, but it's very, very important that you go ahead and you focus on just pulling fighters, building fighters, and building up a really solid synergistic team, again, with the idea in mind that you would like that 4-2 split. If it's not available to you right off the bat, build toward it. If you are going to be using one of the fighters that doesn't build up that 4-2 split, then you're going to probably be in a good place anyway because those characters are really strong and you're probably way or you're just extremely extremely lucky but either way you want to try and focus on some of the different benchmarks and some of the rules of thumb we've talked about in today's video and that will definitely help you progress 
through past 428 and into future chapters. But do keep in mind always that these games are designed to time gate you and make you come back because they are idle games. They want you to have to build up loot. So the stronger your team is, the better your team is, the better your overall power is, the more you're going to be able to get over time. And of course, that is going to be the name of the game when it comes to continuing and to be able to build your characters, which of course comes back around to being the most important thing in the game. So you guys kind of see where this loop goes. So with that said, you guys, that is pretty much going to be the main basics. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you should focus on doing all of your missions every day and doing all these things every day, doing dailies, because this is a mobile game. If you do not know to do dailies and you're not playing the game, then there's a problem, right? So that is something that I'm not going to throw in here and talk about, but just make sure again, as a friendly reminder, totally, totally friendly, just do your dailies. <laughs> So too many people don't do dailies I've seen sometimes and it's just, oh, it, it drives, not in this game, just other games that I play. So just make sure you do your dailies and you'll be in good shape. So with that said, I do want to go ahead and end this with some summons. I think we've kind of gone over the basics for now. So we can go into more in-depth discussion about certain aspects of the game and certain game modes later. I just wanted to kind of give you guys some basics, some need to know tips right off the bat, first downloading this game for team building. So kind of to end this off, we're going to summon because the theme of this video has been summoning, building your team, building your characters, ranking up your characters, etc. And that is exactly what I'm going to try and help myself with here. So we are going to be summoning. I do have 40 of these that I can use. I'm going to save the other seven. That's why I say 40. I know I have 47. <laughs> I know see that one guy in the comment section. But with that said, we are going to go ahead and summon on these. There are plenty of characters that we would want. But of course, the character that I want the most is of course going to be Bison right now. But yeah, right. Um, so yeah, we'll settle for Yuri, right? <laughs> Yeah, uh, we'll see what happens here, but crazier things have happened. So yeah, guys, if you have any specific questions based on what we talked about today, go ahead and let me know in the comment section down below. Um, there is going to be one last tip that I do want to give you guys. Oh, we got a Dudley. That's actually pretty nice. Um, there is one last tip that I want you guys to know that I'm going to give you here because this is actually going to be kind of a learning experience as we summon here for you guys. So pay attention to all these little green fighters like Bethany, Philip, Gary. I didn't even know his name was Gary. Uh, Hody, Philip over here, Philip the ninja. Um, he's the best Philip ever. So pay attention to these little green fighters though, because you're actually, oh no! Wow. Um, I would totally share that if I wasn't making a video. Um, yeah, don't pay attention to the glowing bison. Pay attention to the green fighters. Pay attention to, uh, where'd Philip go? <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe that happened. Wow, um, yeah, so, now that I've done these summons, I can give you guys a couple of miscellaneous tips here at the end. I'm just trying to compose myself after that. That was not planned, obviously. Um, good lord. Okay, so... Let's talk about, let's talk about, as you guys can see, the rewards for summoning. So we're talking about character building in this video, how to build characters, what to do to build characters. Whenever you summon, there are going to be rewards, right? Now, as you guys can see, these guys right here that we've already talked about, these break stones, very, very important, very scarce at a certain point, or at least harder to get at a certain point. You know, so this right here, you can get from summoning as well as other summon currencies. So there are going to be other currencies that you can get through summoning that are going to help you to build your characters. It's almost like they're telling you that the name of the game is building characters, right? So that is something to keep in mind. So whenever you get stuck, if you have the ability, obviously, to summon with tokens, do so. If you're not saving for something in particular, go ahead and summon for it, because obviously at that point, you don't want to stymie your account just for no reason. And with that said, you might end up getting lucky enough to get a random M. Bison pull for your account that is pretty much built around your favorite currently available character in the game, M. Bison, like me. Wow. Um, so... <laughs> 
I want to go ahead, one last tip before we go. I told you guys it would be a learning experience. Sorry, I got completely thrown off from that. Um, so you guys will notice here that I have none of those green fighters. Where's Philip? Where, where green ninja Philip go, right? So that is because I actually have the game set to automatically dismiss them. So you can actually go in here and set this to auto dismiss. Now auto dismiss is automatically going to dismiss any of those green fighters that you guys just saw. So those green fighters, you don't need them. You're not gonna use them, they're trash. They are only there to do one thing in this game and that is to help you to build your characters. So whenever you get rid of those characters and you dismiss them, if you're stuck on break stones, guess what guys? That's gonna be how you get more of them. So that is a quick tip here at the end. I wanted to show you guys visually on summoning some of these other little tips, these miscellaneous ones here at the end, just so you can kind of get a visual because this will also help you to keep your inbox clean if you have that auto dismissal on. So I would just do that and then you'll automatically be able to reap the benefits of dismissing those characters and be able to continue breaking your characters through their glass ceilings, through their limits, and up until they get to their maximum potential. But anyway, you guys, that is going to do it for me in today's video. Um, I am going to try and compose myself because if you can't tell since that bison pull, uh, I've been completely off. Uh, good Lord, I cannot believe that happened. Wow, um, geez, I want him at an S rank so bad. Good Lord, maybe we'll get lucky again. But anyway, you guys, uh, that's gonna be it for today's video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section down below. Hopefully this was helpful to some of you. Hopefully it at least gave you a better understanding of some of the inner workings and kind of what is going on as far as character building, as far as team building is concerned. Let me know in the comments section though, if you have any additional questions based on any of the information we went over today. There will be more guides, more tip videos in the future, but either way, you guys take care. I'll talk to you all in the next one. Peace. Continue.